So this is your first trip to uh, China. What, what led you to decide that now was the right time to come and visit? Well, you know, obviously, as you take a look at the markets globally, and you take a look at the enormous um, competitive advantages that the Japanese have and what's going on, you'd have to be just about insane not to take a look and understand, at least understand what's happening and the impact that they're going to have on energy, on commodities and everything else. And if you're going to be a player globally, you, you can't avoid China to be quite frank. And unfortunately, I think from the African American perspective, it has not been a focus and we haven't done, in my opinion, a good job of understanding the point of entries and the opportunities that may exist. So, you know, as a leader, I feel it was important for me to get engaged and, and get my own perception, not from outside looking in, but to come and really get a chance to meet the people and, and try to make my own uh, observations about what was good and what was bad. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are the things that you were learning in this trip about how to enter the market? Well, one of the things I think is a significant challenge is that our markets are very open. The Chinese market is not nearly as open as our market. So we have a very, uh, we have a, a, a very different philosophical approach in terms of the culture, in terms of the communist country, uh, and in terms of the free market, how we would act. And, and, and we're really, when we take a look at the numbers, we have a significant trade deficit. And uh, it's getting worse and better. And you know, we have to do something different. We've got to figure something out in a hurry. Uh, we got an enormous amount of, uh, as the Chinese can change the fuel of their economy, tremendous amount of energy. I mean, enormous consumption of energy. And, and, and at some point in time, that's going to have some type of figure, that's going to have some type of impact upon the world economies and how they, you know, get the energy to fuel their economy. In the communist country, we really need to have a political stability that the average person feels like it's working for them. If you don't have that, then you have other problems. So they're going to always be very strong and, and very strategic about how to keep this economy going and how to create the jobs and everything else. And I think that's going to put some real global challenges on all of us to be in a competitive position so we can get left behind. Yeah. Um, now, when you go back, uh, what are you going to do? You said that a trade uh, imbalance is an urgent uh, problem uh, when you're back in the market. What are some of the concrete things that you have? Well, I think, I think this trip has, a, has inspired me to do more work in Africa. And I'll tell you this a lot. You know, take a look at where smart ones go on. You know, like in the markets, you know, where institutional money is being invested, it's not where the average investor is going. You know, smart money is always ahead of the path. If you take a look at where China is, they don't spend a lot of time, it's in Africa. Right? So why is the Chinese invested in Africa? Well, it's the richest continent in the world. It's an enormous amount of natural resources. So they're getting ahead of the curve again in terms of securing their own future by investing in Africa into the richest continent in the world. I think that the Europeans and the, uh, and the Americans have, have not, I mean, America has not done a very good job of really valuing uh, the African continent uh, as well. And just as, you know, I think the same thing true as it comes to maybe not evaluating uh, African business owners. I, mean, I think we got the same philosophical approach. We can be appreciated for our wonderful athletic skills, but when it comes to business, we're still trying to change the cultural perception of business ownership. So how do you, as in, in your capacity as the, you know, as the Illinois Street Black Chamber Commerce official, use Africa as a catalyst to fire the Well, I think it's very easy. Uh, I'm headed to Botswana uh, in October. Uh, we'll be in Ghana and Kenya and other places like that. I think we've got to do what we do well, build relationships. Identify the opportunities and work on that, and not focus on what everyone else is doing, but focus on what we can do and do it well. And I think that's the challenge: is to to see the market for what it's worth, and then to strategically position yourself, you know, from the political side and the business side at the same time, so that you can create a environment where you can really penetrate those markets and get ahead of the opportunity. So try to work through some of these business relationships as we are to come into China. That's correct. And if we're there, uh, 
and we build those relationships, then maybe the Chinese have to come and see us. And that'll give us a stronger negotiating position. I, I think one of the biggest fears I have about China and America and this globalization is that uh, China seems to have a very strong economic agenda with energy and everything else. While we're still struggling with our energy policy, and, and we don't seem to have this consensus. You know, we got Democrats fighting against Republicans. It's by, you know, it's party politics. So we've gotten in the way of our own economic prosperity to some degree. And I think the Chinese have had, you know, with a communist party, you know, there's no dissension. Everyone is moving in the right direction. If we don't change that, I think we're in trouble. I, I see some real serious issues that could be for the power. We're going to get smarter about that sort of thing. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you.